Well, look at that. That's next. Let's go inside and I'm going to show you what we got going on. So, this gets a complete interior. So this is a common problem that I see on all the RVs that come through here. And you know this this coach is about three years old. And this happens to all of them. If you're here watching this video, this probably looks really familiar to you too. So the difference here between this cheap Chinese vinyl, which you see just totally flakes and falls apart. Matter of fact, I even saw a piece right here on top of the dash. How did it get there? So this stuff is like paper thin. And somehow the, the plastic part that's supposed to be vinyl, it sheds and it separates from the cloth backing. So the cloth backing is still there. There's no holes, but it just looks terrible but we also have a dinette and we have this sleeper sofa I already pulled some of the cushions out that's why they're missing so here we go in different colors different grains but this is what I use I, I don't go cheap on my customers I use the best that there is available and that there is really the difference between cheap Chinese vinyl and the good stuff. So what I'm going to be doing is simplifying this uh, the seats here. He doesn't want a lot of the finer details that are on these seats, which would make them even more expensive to do. So I'm going to be able to um, simplify some of these patterns. So same as always, what I always do to start out is always mark my intersections. If you've seen some of my other videos, you'll see that that's like really always the first thing that I do. And in areas where there are no intersections, usually what I'll do is I will put a mark on there somewhere so that way I can match them up when everything gets sewn back together again. So Lucille, the roughened up box cutter here, um, says hi. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started with her. And what we do with her is because it's serrated, it's a serrated edge, it pops the thread. So let's go ahead and start with that. Time to make the patterns. So, lay it out, draw it out. If you notice, I have it a little bit larger than what you're seeing. That's because of this flap. When you fold that flap, you can see that that's where I marked it. You see that? But it, it's, to save time, I don't do that. I just kind of know it's going to be there. So that's what we're going to do. Got my placement marks right there. Make sure we get those. So if you notice, when I take my patterns apart, you can see here how everything's still connected. And you'll see 
in my other videos, the reason I do that is so that way when it goes to put something back together again, there's no guessing. It's not a jigsaw puzzle anymore. It's like a pre-solved jigsaw puzzle. Because I'm going to be sewing foam on the back of this vinyl, I'm going to leave a little flange on the outside of my pattern there. I need to do some sewing. So I'm going to sew these um, bottom insert pieces together first because they have to be sewn before we put them on foam. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Now for the top stitch. So now for technique number 412. Okay, and I need to sew, or I need to put foam on this here. But as you can see, there's some wrinkles in here because there's no tension on it. You know, if you pull it right, then the wrinkles come out. But what I need to do is I need to put this together with the foam. So what I am going to do is we're going to float the center. So remember, where there's no glue, it won't stick. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put glue around the perimeter, the outside perimeter. That's just going to fold it in place. No glue in the center. One of the reasons I do the floating center on this panel right here, as you can see those wrinkles, is that there's no glue there to hold it in place. So then later, when I install the cover on the seat, I could just use some heat and those wrinkles will come right out. So for now, I'm going to start sewing all of these. I'm going to start sewing out the patterns, and then we got to trim and cut them out. There's Miss Nibbles, the Wonder Dog. Hi, Nibbles. Hi, my Nibbles. So now a short discussion about seat hook. Okay, I've had some people in the comments talking about this stuff here. So it's a, like a C or a J shape. And what it does is it hooks around and that's how it connects to the seat frame. So seat hook, that's S-E-A-T, seat hook, not C hook. Some people call it C hook, some people call it J hook. But you know what, for 43 years, I've been calling it seat hook. And my suppliers, they list it as seat hook. Um, you know, everything is always, you know, for 43 years, I've been calling it seat hook. So I guess, you know, for the people that are telling me it's J hook and C hook, um, I've been calling it the wrong thing all these years. I'm glad that they gave me an education. So the objective here is to get this listing. And down in the phone, usually there's going to be a listing wire, like that one right there. So 
So what we do is we take the hog ring pliers and the hog ring, you hook it, and then you hook it down into the listing wire like that. Just give it a squeeze, and there you go. After that is just the Velcro. and set the Velcro where it's supposed to be, like that. So te technique number 2385 is to grab along this seam right here, this top seam, it's always a good idea to start there first. So when I, I can see that it, it gets a hog ring right here. So what I do is I pull that, okay, hog ring that, oh, I let go. Okay, let's try it again. Just like that. So you put that one hog ring there that holds everything nice and tight along this seam here so then way later when you go to put the rest of the stuff together you see how it smooths all that out right there because you did most of the work right there where the vinyl attaches to the metal frame right here it gets wrapped like that then it gets these little clips. Focus, focus, there we go. Gets these kind of clips that go around the metal frame and pushes on like that. So I'm gonna do that now. I wish I had a third hand. Sometimes I ask God for a third hand, but I thought if I did, I'd look really funny. Just like we started in the back here, we'll also start in the back here. So we're gonna to pull towards the back like that. Take a little clip with my second hand because I don't have my third hand. Then just use something. I use anything. If I didn't have a hammer, I use that. So we'll just keep going. I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So here's the controversial seat hook. So this has to go over this metal edge. And that's why it's a hook. Lastly for the install is to take out any wrinkles with the heat gun. So the backrest is going to be basically the same process as this bottom cushion here. So I'm not going to bore you guys with that. So I'm just going to move on, finish up this seat, and then we'll see this result here in a second. And that's the last of the backrest right there. So I'm just going to go and install that. Well, I'm making my way through this project. Um, I did have a deadline that I'm trying to meet, and there's a lot of work here. So I kind of worked my way through it, just kind of focusing on my work, not really making the video. But anyway, what I did get done is this uh, the sleeper right here. Got that done. Uh, just finishing up the dinette right now. Uh, as you saw earlier, we finished up the front seats.
Just keep going. Well, here we go, folks. Finally finished. I've had this Coach RV here for a long, long, long time. Mostly because I'm trying to fit it between my other work and, but I'm trying to make this one here a priority. And it's finished, finally got it finished. Well, if you're still watching this and you made it almost all the way to the end of this video, I really, really, really appreciate you. I re really appreciate you sticking in there with me to watch me get through this. And don't forget to like my videos. That really helps me out. Uh, that helps me to get more views and that way I can have more success. So if you could please do that, that'd be greatly appreciated. So till next time, we'll see ya.